The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Yeah, these words of comfort. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone, for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, 
pardon your sins and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for today, the Feast of the Transfiguration. Holy God, on the Mount of Transfiguration, you revealed your Son as the Christ. Transform our lives in his image. Write your law of love on our hearts and make us prophets of your shining splendor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Two Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord would take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that you today the Lord would take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what may I do for you before I am taken from you? Elisha said, Please, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and his horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Hear the word of the Lord.
a second reading is that the precept is taken from the second, second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. A reading from second Corinthians. The reading is in its course. Ukubake the Kutere in Dava Ezu Leo Ze Tu, the Kutere Quabo Bachabalayo. I tell you, Chico will be Pagade, was in Pamakis and Pagati Quabo in Muko, Zamana Koroayo, Ukuze, Singer Benezi, the Kubo is a kind so, send up Ezu Leo, the Kakao in Uga Kresu. Kuba Sivagalisitina Sivagalisa Uyesu Kuba Uyos Sibetina Sivagalisa Uba Singapakozi Benu Gemakais Gokuba Utiko Yenawati Ukhaniso Manukhani Bumyani Utiko kanyi sele inti ziyo zetu. Ukuze ukanye ukwaziwa. Nukukakao libake. Ebu sueni buka Yesu Christu. Hear the word of the Lord.
be with you. This is the good news proclaimed in the second chapter, the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning at the second verse. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of Christ. Taking up your cross, 
the visual image that comes to mind is that of a condemned man coming out to Jerusalem, going beyond the walls and going to Golgotha, accompanied by a cohort of soldiers, many of them mercenaries, all wearing the insignia of occupation. And when they see a person carrying a cross, they knew that that one was on his way to death. And so when Jesus says to them, you must follow me, they were there yelling and say, come and die with me. That is not a very good, strong political campaign slogan. Come and die with me. We are living in a season where it is come and vote for me so that I and my party and my close cohorts of comrades and confederates can look lovely after you've given my vote. But when he's saying, come and die with me, this transfiguration moment is so significant. If we contrast this invitation where Jesus selects three of them, Peter, James, and John, to travel with him, to go up the mountain, they are, they have not been, nothing has been clarified. They were not sure are they going to spend the night on the mountain, must they take part with, they were just invited. In contrast, Elijah knows that he is heading towards his assumption into the heavens, that he will be lifted out from the crowd. He wants to do it alone. But Elijah says, no, let me come with you. And every time they come to the desert, when they come to Mishka, there's a cohort of prophets to say, do you know your master's going to leave you? Yes, I know. Shut up. I know the Bible says silence, but I know he's irritated. That's what I said. Shut up. Come to Jericho, the same thing, and then they come to the point of there the Jordan. And then the moment that was read in the Old Testament, he disappears from the midst. So if you look at Jesus, the fact that he wants company, say something about his own vulnerability. How many times when we seek out loneliness, we feel we are, we don't have anybody to be alone, and then we seek out solitude where you are comfortable with the silence. But in this moment, he wants companionship, but he also seeks to have witnesses. And look at the very particular relationship that he had had and has with them and will have. There's Peter who just before that he had told him, would say to you, you cannot die. You're telling us you, that we must follow you and that you are going the way of the cross of condemnation. Because in this narrative, there's no resurrection, there's only torture, and there's death. And then he is rebuked in a most offensive way. Get behind me, you son of Satan, because you speak in the ways of men. And so, surely when you are so insulted so publicly, in a very contested environment of those who want to be close to Jesus, to be put on your place like that. Maybe he's still sulking six days later when he had just been told, shut up in another way. And some of you are going to go home today and people, oh, how was the son hey, that man told us to shut up a lot of times. It's a lot of our use of phrase. And then, who was James and, and John? They are the ones who bring in their mommy to say, organize for us. We want to be on the left. We want to be the deputy or the chief post in cabinet. And then he uses the example of a little child. So they are also rebuked. But maybe it's also the honesty of spirit that they are with our guy. And they declare their interest. And the interests are out there in a way that Thomas the science the way that the other ones have not declared really what they are sharing 
and that it personified the interests there and it's distilled and articulated by these three men. But Jesus probably knows when we push down to the shelf, along the way they're all going to desert him, but he invests in there and so they accompany him. And so many a times in our own life, in this moment, a few days before Lent, before Ash Wednesday, we might declare our interest as of not being worthy. Not being worthy of fasting, not being worthy of praying. In whatever way our distance from Jesus Christ is refrained in our quiet lonely moments in life. But so they go, and they are traveling up. And in order to seek out solitude, to be alone, it's difficult, but it's necessary. And when you climb out a mountain, and you're not really fit, you're not doing it on a regular basis, it's a lot of deep breathing. Now they say to you, breathe in and out. You can say, Yahweh, God. A meditative way of fighting for your breath. When I was a deacon in 1985, my letter, the late Father Bob and Ma would okay and say, Come, we're going to after Thursday morning Eucharist, we go walk up the hills of Ocean View, which is a very cynically named uh, name for a township where you can't actually see the ocean. They used to have a view of the ocean when they lived in Sandstown, and then they are taken away from that view and they are dumped behind and a distance from the beach. But Father Bob had a way of negating that, and he would lead me on the path going to the top of this hill called Slumkop. And then sometimes I would just hear him say, Oh, what a boy. That's so beautiful. And after the third time, I realized, I'm going to die. But to be tired and to pause and to look back on the journey, travel and to see what is beautiful in the distant vista is a good way of traveling inwardly. Because of the tiredness of what life has brought you, that which you have lost, that which you think you will never ever recover again, in that moment, breathe. And Lent compels us to breathe, to invite. And it's good. And one of the things that I love about Ramadan is the social aspect. Fasting was never to be ik alien in my liver, Jesus. We are all in God. It was also collective. And so that iftar, the breaking of bread at the end of the, of the, the fast of that day, when you gather socially, there's obviously also not so one wonderful thing because Vince can make a fiftar in that time because you are now comparing your biryani with my samosas. But it's still the conversation. And the longer you go on the fast, the less important food becomes. But there is that need for us to gather, to come to church more intentionally. There are going to be Bible study groups and other reflection groups. And then there is the intensification of our Lenten journey. And we have uh, the Tezi service. It's all there in the program. Come apart from whatever I have been rigorous about today and has made me breathless and paused with fellow pilgrims on the Lenten journey. There will also be detractors, as his holy prophet says to Elisha. Do you know this man is going to die? He's going to disappear. Keep on. Are you going to fast? Oh, you're born again. Of course, of course you're born, born again. again. If, if you're not, not being born, born again, then you say, Bob Dylan, you are dying. Every believer 
seeks to be born again. And it is in that moment of confession when we call to mind and confess our sins so that we may live our lives more perfectly. What a wonderful intention. But we are often detracted by the ones, what will the people say about me? But step up, step forward, and continue on the journey. And so there is that moment where they hear the voice again. And the voice that says, this is my son, there's a relationship that is established, and also the quality of that relationship. I love him. I really love this child of mine. He is my beloved. It is hard that Jesus there in the desert, rather at the river Jordan, when he's baptized by his cousin, that voice right at the beginning of the ministry is there. And then at the beginning of the way that will take him to the cross, that voice again is there and is affirmed. And it's Elijah and it's Moses. It's Moses of the law that goes up the mountainside and has to wait in silence before it is communicated to him the nature of the covenant. And then he has to go down again where the golden calf is being built. And then eventually we'll have to hear the men, were there no graves in Egypt that we will have to come out here into the desert to die? The people that he offered so much for, he will have to hear that, but he will have to recall that moment on the mount, that moment of the cloud. And always there's this cloud threaded through much of scripture that speaks about mystery, of that which is hidden, and that which is not completely understood, but to be there, perhaps, is the most important. And so, when Elijah comes to the river Jordan, he can't cross over. And if you go to Jordan, the town, the, the country, and you travel outside the city of Amman, and you travel towards the Jordan, there is a height of a hill that is dedicated to Moses. Where Moses was still see, so there is what I have promised, but it's not for you. It's not laid out for you. And there's a monument dedicated to Moses. And if you can ever do a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, start there. Because it's beautiful, the vastness of the promise. But he has to hold back. But there's another one, in this case, Elijah, who will go beyond. And so there are many times in our journey we do not reach the designated end. Maybe we are meant just to go so far, not completely. We can't compare ourselves to the Joshua's that cross over. That is the joy. It's good for us, good Lord, says Peter, to be here. To be here in the cloud of mystery of not knowing. But sometimes we are in a place that we do not understand. Yesterday we made Tony Sidras, a wonderful jazz musician from my hometown, Al And when you start hearing Tony's life, it's often only at funerals that you see through the lens of recall, of nostalgia, of anecdotes to negate a fuller understanding of who this man was and today is in memory. And when they are standing there at the foot of the cross at a distance, besieged by the betrayal that they are deserted, when they are standing in the upper room, they are awash with memories. They start thinking. They start giving up or they start becoming do you know he said that maybe in that conversation and in that gathering of incidents and little stories, they begin to understand the bigger picture of this young man 
but they fell in love with when he was 30 years old. And now they grieved at his grave. They get a bigger picture. But we have to be there, whether we're there as Peter, James, and John, or whether we are there as Elisha. And look at that moment of passing, that moment when the beloved prophet Elijah ascends into the heavens. And they say to him, the chariots of fire, he declares, O oh Lord, when you see the chariots of fire coming, O oh Lord, your warriors, the Israel of which the Elisha is ministering to and whom he will prophesy to, I have got no armies. The ones waiting in the promised land are the warriors. They are the mighty chariots and mercies, well trained and equipped for combat and for victory. They are nothing but the defeat of the history. And what Elisha does here, and he says to us, do not put your trust in that which can kill. Do not put your faith in that which cannot forgive. Put your faith in the chariots and fire and the horsemen of Yahweh. It is God who will do what must be done. And it is God who presents us Jesus alone on the cross for our sake. That it enables us, looking back centuries later, on the marvel of his teaching, of the simplicity of his truth, of the nature of his miracles, that looks upon us and says, You are my beloved. I have chosen you. These, you and I, are the chosen. Everyone who says, Yeah, I, Lord, send me. We are chosen because of our obedience. You and I are chosen when we say, I forgive. I will not forget, but I will not hope, allow your deeds to teach me how to be a human being. You could have broken my heart, you could have stolen my land, you could have been the cause of so much depression in my life, but you will not be my teacher. We are chosen to be the people of grace and to be the carriers of the beauty of loveliness. And so when we go into Lent, beloved, be like the man who comes before the throne of God in the silence of his heart, in the darkness of his spirit, and he says, Lord, I cannot pray. I do not know how to pray. And the spirit will speak as the spirit speaks to all those who seek who seek to love a better and a different life. When we say we cannot pray, it is the beginning of our prayers. It is the beginning of honesty. It's the beginning of wanting to fall in love with Jesus. And may that be our quest and our blessing on this planet and journey. Amen. invited to stand as we proclaim our faith.
be seated as we pray. You may follow on page 112 in the Anglican prayer book. Dear God, as we become silent before you, we bring especially our thoughts and our minds and our deeds for the week. And we pray for a complete transformation and the renewal of our thoughts and our minds and the clarion call as we prepare for Ash Wednesday and Lent for renewal and growth. We remember, especially today, dear Lord, the repose of the soul of Gladys, the mother of Glenda Wolskett. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. So, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have taught us to pray and to give thanks for all people. Receive our prayers for the universal church, that it may know the power of your Spirit, and that all your children may agree in the truth of your holy word and love in unity and godly love. We pray for your servant Joshua, our bishop, together with Thabo, our metropolitan, and for all other ministers of your word and sacraments, that by their life and teaching, your glory may be revealed and all nations drawn to you. Guide and prosper, we pray, for those who strive for the spread of your gospel and enlighten with your spirit all places of work, learning and healing. We pray for those who have authority and responsibility among the nations, praying especially for our president, our premier, and our mayor, that ruling with wisdom and justice, they may promote peace and well-being in the world. And so to this congregation and to all your people in their different callings, give your heavenly grace that we may hear your holy word with reverent and obedient hearts and serve you truly all the days of our life. In your compassion, Father, comfort and heal those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, or in sickness. We praise and thank you for all your saints, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of Jesus Christ our Lord, and for the heroes of the faith in every generation. And we remember before you your servants who have died, praying that we may enter with them into the fullness of your unending joy. Grant this, Holy Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. One of the hats that I wear as dean is also being the archdeacon of our cathedral. And Father Richard um, sub responded very positively to an invitation I sent him last year. If he would join us again as he has been uh, partially and often completely in the days leading up to Easter, but for this time I ask you to be with us for Ash, from Ash Wednesday onwards, which you know now is on the 14th of this uh, week. And part of the governance matters of our diocese and of our province is that when somebody is with us officiating or preaching, that person needs to have the license of the bishop. And it is that what we will do now, and I will uh, license um, Father Richard Lloyd Morgan. And Father, you can stand on the lowest steps. Can your icon exceed mine? 
Otherwise, something is lost in the efficacy of this process. So, people of God, we have come here today to license Richard Lloyd Morgan to serve in this parish. He is accepting a responsibility which inspires fear as well as joy, because he will have to care for people for whom Christ died. So pray, therefore, that God will give him strength to be faithful, courageous, and loving in the ministry which is now being entrusted to him. So let us pray. Almighty God, you sent John the Baptist to proclaim the coming of your Son. Inspire the ministers and stewards of your word and sacraments to prepare for his coming again by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of your law. Through Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Almighty God, giver of all good gifts, who by your Holy Spirit you call many to serve you in the ordained ministry. Bless Richard now call to serve you in this parish together with myself as rector and as dean. Give him grace to know the truth of the gospel and to proclaim it both in his life and teaching that together with your people he may set forward the work of your church through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. And so now the oath is taken. I, Richard Lloyd Morgan do swear that I will pay due and canonical obedience to the Archbishop of Cape Town, the Bishop of Table Bay, and their successors. So help me God. The Anglican Church of Southern Africa is part of the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures, held by the primitive church, summed up in the creeds, and affirmed by the undisputed general councils to which the 39 articles of religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons bear witness. And so listen in the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith, as your inspiration and guidance under God. In bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care, and so will you consent to be bound by the laws of this church. I, Richard Lloyd Morgan, now about to be licensed assistant priest in the Cathedral of St. George the Martyr, Cape Town, solemnly make the following declaration. I declare my belief in the faith which is uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures held by the primitive church, summed up in the creeds and affirmed by the undisputed general councils to which the 39 articles of religion, the Book of Common Prayer and the ordering of bishops, priests and deacons bear witness. I affirm my loyalty to this inheritance of faith as my inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in my care. I, Richard Lloyd Morgan, declare that in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorized or allowed by lawful authority and that I consent to be bound by all the laws and canons, both present and future, of the Anglican Church of Southern Africa, 
and by the rules and regulations which have now been made, or which may from time to time be made by the Diocesan Synod of the Diocese of Cape Town and by the Provincial Synod of the Anglican Church of Southern Africa. I hereby subscribe to the pastoral standards set out in Act 15 of Provincial Synod, as may be amended from time to time, and undertake to exercise my ministry in accordance with those standards. So now I read the license. Joshua Lowe, by divine permission, Bishop of Table Bay in the Diocese of Cape Town. To our beloved in Christ, Richard Lloyd Morgan, a priest in the Church of God, we greet you in the name of the Lord. We hereby grant you, of whose faithfulness, integrity, learning, sound doctrine, and diligence, we are assured our license and authority to officiate as an assistant priest under the oversight and direction of the very Reverend Michael Weeder in the Cathedral of St. George the Martyr, Cape Town, within our diocese and jurisdiction. You, having first taken the oath of canonical obedience to us and our successors, and having made and subscribed the declarations described prescribed by the canons of the Anglican Church of Southern Africa. We authorize you to preach the word of God, to administer the sacraments, and to perform other ministrations and duties in accordance with the canons of the Church of this province and the regulations of this diocese, as will build up God's people and further the gospel of Christ. We reserve to the bishops of the diocese and ourselves and our successors the right to revoke this license as provided in the canons of the Anglican Church of Southern Africa. We assure you of our prayers that God may bless you in this ministry and undertaken in the name of Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit given under our hand and seal this 11th day of February in the year of our Lord 2024 in the fourth year of our consecration, Bishop Joshua of Table Bay. And so I hand you now the license. And so, beloved Richard, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and your work done in his name. The Lord give you wisdom, courage, strength, and love to do his will now and always. You are duly licensed to overcome and let me give you some good love. Then Bosisi, Nolundi, and Eminence. Anything you want to share about, about the due process of the Dean to come? That's in the clouds of witness. Aiko. Okay. Um, so, in the collective we of the executive, as yet, um, the process of identifying and ultimately the, whole, the process of the summit for the new deal will be reviewed in due process. 
and then either Sister Rundi or Sister Emma will uh, be standing here with more information. But firstly, no, um, Koladi, it's good to have you back from your, your journey of love to be with your family and extended soul to honor the passing of your dad and to lay him to rest as required by all that makes you who you are as a human being uh, on this continent and in the world. It's also good to have you back knowing that the eagles have flown high and we still love you always. And to Bafana, You didn't win, but you didn't lose, because you did well. So let's give both Nigeria and Rafana. And then lastly, people, um, you, you, you might start to think I'm working as a pilot somewhere. Um, after being in the Holy Land, along with Kululeko, um, Kotsioni, and others under the leadership of the Reverend Frank Chikani. The Archbishop on my return asked me to represent him in Istanbul at a peaceful Palestine or a free Palestine um, conference of uh, about five days. Or well, the journey and then back in the, the weekend conference uh, amounted to that length of days. And um, subsequent to that, he has also now asked, him, asked me to represent him and our church uh, on a journey of peace uh, to the people of Ukraine, of the Ukraine. So I leave tomorrow, and then I return on the 27th. So there will be two Sundays, including Ash Wednesday, that I won't be here. I ask you please to hold me in prayer and the other eight persons from civil society that will accompany, uh, that I will be part of in that journey to be alongside the people of Ukraine. Um, I ask the core and principal coordinator, why do you need a priest and an Anglican priest to be? He said, no, not so much a priest, but it's what the Anglican church has come to be associated with. Uh, in, in many, many terrains, terrains and with also within, within our country. country. And our Archbishop uh, had a very warm and firm interaction with the Orthodox Bishop out in uh, the Ukraine. And so my presence will also ensure that continuity. And so it was a very timely uh, reminder from Bishop Joshua on Tuesday and then all brought together uh, on Friday that we have the licensing, and so all protocols of governance is, uh, is honored and observed, and uh, as we also hear, yeah, there's a moment of silence in the body of our gathering in that Glenn and Volskett, our mom, as we heard in the prayers, uh, passed away in the hours of this morning. So, thank you. Father Richard, for the sharing of the peace. Just before I invite you to share the peace, may I say that I am profoundly grateful and profoundly humbled by your generous welcome, not just from the dean, but, but from, from all the members of the clergy staff, staff the cathedral, cathedral staff, staff who have welcomed me, and by you who have welcomed me more than I feel I can ever deserve. I'm very aware that in my own diocese, where I work in, well, <laughs> retired, in, uh, in London, in the Diocese of Southwark, I would be considered to be the wrong age, the wrong colour, and the wrong gender. So, so I find it kind of rewarding to come to Cape Town and, and be welcomed like this. Could, Could I also, also just, just in passing welcome Rita, Rita who is coming as tomorrow. tomorrow. She, she celebrates 80 years, 80 years, years since her baptism. 
and we'll have a very quick renewal of her baptismal vows after the service, if that's what she would like. So congratulations, Rita. Christ is our peace. Through him we are reconciled to one God in body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us offer one another a sign.
is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the splendor and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It, for in us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because his glory shone forth upon the holy mountain before eyewitnesses of his majesty and manifested the power and coming of his kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever, singing... Father, through your Son, Christ our Lord, through him accept our offering of thanks and praise, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This, this is my body which is given for you. you. Do this in remembrance of me. So too after supper he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me.
so we proclaim the mystery of faith. celebrate before you the one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord, his rising from the dead and his ascending to the glory of heaven. Gracious Lord, accept us in him, unworthy though we are, so that we who share in the body and blood of your Son may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Saviour in the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness, with whom and in whom and through whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour be given to you, Almighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ?
not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in our manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose name is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may grow more dwell in him and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand. The Mass has ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.